The two suspects run to the front foyer area and from the outside start to fire at the deceased through the glass windows. At this point, the vehicle that drove the deceased to the scene leaves the area uh, for his own personal safety, but he later returns, and as I indicated to you, is cooperating with the investigation. The deceased is trapped between the suspects and the interior door. The deceased falls to the floor of the foyer. The suspects continue to fire at the deceased while he's lying on the floor. At one point, one of the suspects wearing a burgundy hoodie touches the metal frame of the lobby door in an attempt to hold the door open. Realizing that he has touched the door, the offender in the burgundy hoodie pulls his arm up his sleeve and begins to wipe what he believes is fingerprints that he's left uh, on the door frame. Following that, that individual in the burgundy sweater continues to fire at the deceased while he's lying on the floor. Both of the suspects are armed with semi-automatic pistols. The video shows that both of the weapons lock in the open position, which indicates that the weapons are now empty. The two suspects run back uh, to the Ford Fusion that's waiting for them that has now taken the posi position where the deceased vehicle was earlier parked. One sus suspect wearing the burgundy hoodie gets into the front passenger seat. The suspect wearing the blue or black hoodie gets into the front, uh, sorry, gets into the rear right passenger seat. The suspect leaves um, the um, property of 6 Glamorgan Avenue and travels at a high rate of speed northbound on Kennedy Road towards the 401 Highway. As I indicated from pathology examination, the deceased was struck many times. Uh, the deceased was transported from the scene by paramedics to an area hospital. The deceased underwent uh, emergency medical surgical procedures in an effort to save his life, and they were not successful. He does have a, a criminal past with uh, the Toronto Police Service, and uh, the family were certainly aware that uh, that may you know, surface during the investigation, so he is known to us. Um, I can indicate to you that he was involved in a relationship. He had a young child um, that uh, lived in the city of Toronto. Um, he uh, was not on any current charges. Um, so we're still looking in, he was not, uh, we're looking into, uh, you know, his lifestyle and his background, but as it stands right now, part of the reason for being here is to find out what the motivation is. What is his relationship with the rapper Drake? Uh, Drake actually, as we know, put an a, a Instagram post saying that this man was part of his family. Um, what, can you, what can you talk about when it comes to that? Uh, pretty much the same as you know. I've spoken to the family of Mr. Soros. They indicated that um, uh, he was known to Drake. Uh, Drake was a friend of his. Um, many of the family members have uh, met Drake. Um, and I certainly would encourage um, him through his tweets to encourage anybody within the community to come forward with regards to any information that they have that may assist in solving his friend's murder. Um, Mr. Soros was clearly the target of the attack. Um, there was another individual who was present that's clearly associated with Mr. Soros and uh, he's still alive and he was allowed to leave. So whatever animus or whatever baggage that Mr. Soros had with these two individuals or, or uh, any part of a group that they're associated to, um, at this point it remains unknown, but they were certainly only interested in the deceased person in this particular case.